woke up in a dark room. I, I couldn't see anything in the void-like darkness, however, I could smell a light copper scent and an odor like urine. As I put my hands on the ground, I could feel a cold floor, possibly tiling or hardwood or even stone, but most importantly, a liquid. Suddenly, I got a flash of memory, not long enough to see everything, but long enough to get a basic idea. A small party, a wedding maybe. I could hear singing, deep singing, and as soon as I picked this memory up, it disappeared. But, but now it was replaced with a very different kind of sensation. Very subtly, but ever so present, I heard scratching all around me. It, it was not like the sound of scratching your skin, but it, it sounded like metal scraping on stone. I panicked and darted around the dark room, tripping over myself. I still couldn't see anything. It was only when the scratches stopped that I felt safe to search for a switch. Once I stood up, I felt a mild ache in my mouth. Mostly my teeth, as if some were chipped badly. I put the feeling away as no concern and looked for another wall. It didn't take me long until I found a wall barely away from me, possibly only six feet. Once I felt the light switch, a dim yellow tinted light turned on, first barely lighting the room. I wasn't able to see much, but I knew it was a bathroom. The cheap plastic tiles with cracks here and there. An ancient looking toilet that looks like it hasn't been functioned for years, along with rusted bolts on it that match the pipes. I turned my gaze to the sink and rested my hands on it. It's a porcelain sink with a rusted set of knobs and a dispenser with broken pieces of a mirror in it. Instantly I look up and notice that the mirror is indeed broken. Suddenly the scraping noise came back, much louder than before. I fell on the floor in a sharp pain. I tried to scream, but the pain was so great that all I could do was lie paralyzed. As I lay in pain, a new memory surfaced through my mind. I'm sitting with people, and this time I could see faces, some of which I could recognize. There was my mother with her neat black hair and a ponytail, and my sister Audrey, with an emerald necklace that matched her dress. Soon, through the many voices of socialization amongst everyone, I heard a faint scream, and all went silent. The scraping stops. I got up fast and noticed that the light is fully on, revealing much more detail. In the corner, there is blood. I think it's my blood. It's smeared on the wall going down to where I was passed out. In the dry puddle is my handprints and the texture of my clothes. I took off my suit jacket and indeed saw on the dark blue fabric the same red liquid. I then look at the mirror again, remembering my ache. Looking at my teeth, I expected to see that one, two, many more were chipped. But as soon as I opened my mouth, I I fell back and hurtled in the corner. My teeth were not chipped. There weren't many teeth left to chip if they were. Almost all of my front teeth were gone or deep black. My tongue, or therefore whatever was left of it, it was also a black shade. I couldn't feel it. It was completely numb. I could taste something still, something like burnt meat. As I quietly cried in the corner of the grimy washroom, the scraping returned, but this time it was ever so quiet. So quiet that I only heard it after I stopped crying. It was so faint but so audible that it drove me mad. I bashed on the walls and screamed profanities and curses, pounding at the wood panels until I could break them off the concrete base that they were glued to. I screamed louder, begging the sound to leave my ears, but every effort to block out the noise was useless. Every scream, bang, crash, or quake I made could not silence the scraping. It was always there, overlapping every noise I made. Then as soon as the scrapes were gone, a memory came. But this time it wasn't just a flash. I could see the detail of the building, the antique bronze plating on the ceiling, the Persian rug pattern on the carpeted floor, and now everyone was dressed so nicely. That's when I realized that this was a wedding. Michael and Isabella's wedding. Mike, Mike was a close friend of mine. We, we would always play on Audrey's GameCube when she was at work. The music I heard was soft and deep. Very white, maybe? Then the food came. 
these silver platters served by a local restaurant our family always ate at on Christmas. I was the last in line to get food. When I did get my food, I subtly take a piece of pulled pork and put it in my mouth. Soon, as I walked back to my family, I heard screaming. It was the bride's sister, Mackenzie, holding her youngest child, Thomas. He was limp and pale as snow, with his veins slightly turning black, foaming at the mouth. Soon, Mackenzie drops Thomas and collapses, foaming at the mouth and bleeding from the nose. I look back at the food and quickly see something. In the pulled pork, a writhing movement comes from the meat. I, I quickly spat out the food and screamed, running to the restroom. I push past convulsing bodies and panicking family members, kicking open the bathroom door and vomiting. After bowing to the porcelain throne, I saw a black bug, possibly as big as your hand. It looked like a potato bug. I don't mean like a ladybug. I mean those gigantic monsters that look like termites. However, this bug had four legs and big pincers. I frantically flushed it down and tried to see if I could flee the bathroom, but I, I was halted by what was outside the door. The convulsing bodies of my family quickly go from a pale tone to gray, with their veins black and protruding from the skin. I can see little black bugs, the same kind I threw up, crawling over and inside the corpses, some eating away at the less decayed flesh. That, that's when I see the best man, David, try to make a run for it and s try to book it to the main entrance, but he trips on a body. That's when I saw this black bug start swarming towards him, running with a speed much greater than ours. In a quick moment, one of the bugs latched onto his neck with the pincers, and before it could do anything, it released a stinger into his neck, and as instantly his veins turned to dark, dark black. He falls over as fast as it killed him, and David was covered in those bugs. I look at them from a distance, but it was far enough to where I could notice these creatures had no eyes. Then I noticed something else. They entered his nose. Without looking, I try to move backwards, and I hear a crunch. I stepped on one of the bugs. The bugs and David's almost eaten corpse stop crawling and start turning towards me. In a frenzy, I quickly close the door. I felt a sense of safety knowing that these bugs couldn't fit through the hair thin crack under the door. As I backed away, I slipped on the vomit that missed the toilet and hit my head on the wall. And then everything went black. Once the memory fades, I quietly opened the door, and the pungent odor of death nearly made me vomit. There were bodies decaying and foaming from every orifice. They looked like leather bags with yellow foam leaking out of the punctured holes. I look where I remember seeing David in the memory, and as quick as I saw him, I pulled the door shut. In the suit of the man was a hive of black bugs going in and out of the almost skeletonized remains. I huddled into a corner crying softly and holding back the urge to throw up. That's when the scrapes came back, and in, in distress I covered my ears, yet the noise is still the same, even though I can't hear through my ears. That, that's when a horrid realization comes to me. The scraping isn't coming from all around me. It's coming from inside my head. <laughs> 